sitting here with Craig Coleman. How are you, Craig? Doing great, thank God, you. God, Craig, I want to tell you, you wrote a wonderful book, The Hundred Years of the Brodies with Al Roach. Tell me about Al Roach, a hundred years. He was almost a hundred years before he died, didn't he? He lived to be over a hundred. Oh, did he? Yeah. He was looking forward to reaching a hundred. Several years before he reached a hundred, he would tell me, do you know on my next birthday I'm uh -huh. going to be a hundred years old? I said, a Brody now? A Brody. Brody. Yeah, Brody's our buddies or... Hal Roach used that term all the time, even on the Academy Awards when he won his special Oscar uh -huh. in 1984. I remember thinking, he, there he goes with that word Brody again. The, one of his comics did a Brody, took a Brody. He was connected before he, he did his own studio. He was connected with MGM Studios. Oh, no. No, he, he, he had started, his own dream. He was 20 years old when he came to Hollywood. 20? Yes. Okay. Started as a cowboy extra uh -huh. and met Hal, uh, Harold Lloyd. Okay. Another young, struggling actor. actor right. They got together. They got some money men together, got a camera, and started filming what they called hobo farces around what is now MacArthur Park. Right. In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Right. They eventually sold this comedy, Just Nuts, to Pathé Exchange in New York City. Uh-huh. And uh, Pathé ordered a whole series of com comedies. Right. And Hal Roach became successful almost overnight. With kids... But actually, comedy with kids and also uh, that. Well, he started with Harold Lloyd, just him, BB Daniels. Did start with Al he did. Harold Lloyd, just usually uh, just a, a small group of comedians to begin with. Yeah, what's this? Is this. Uh, That's his, his original Victorian home studio. In New York? That's it. No, Bunker Hill, Los Angeles. Bunker is, oh, this is That's Bunker Hill. It was torn yeah. down How, years ago. Why did they tear such a beautiful building? Isn't that sad? Ah. There are beautiful Victorian homes still that In have that been area. preserved. Yeah. Yeah, but not that one, unfortunately. Yeah, now tell me something about this picture. Okay, wow. 1920, 1919, Hal Roach signed Sunshine Sammy Morrison, the little uh, comedian. Right. He was the first African American to be signed to a long term contract in Hollywood. Uh -huh. This little black boy, look at him, he's signing his little hand. Yeah, and, he and that's his father? That's his father. Of course, his father had to sign. He was that, a minor. Right. And, and uh, that was when he had moved to his new studio in Culver City. Uh -huh. He built a beautiful studio out there. Look at him here with holding monkeys. I love it. Hell Roach, my God. The Dippy Doodad series uh -huh. of animals. Yes. Yeah. That's 1923. Cute. 23. Yes. Ah. Silence. He just uh, was experimenting with all sorts of comedies. And this is the Hal E. Roach's That's his main studio. studio. Look at in front of that car. Yeah, he Look. was. Yeah, he was quite a quite a character. That's in Culver City. Culver City, Washington Boulevard. Is it's, it still there? This. Oh no. Why? That's they a tragedy. Tear it? Oh my God. This the tragedy of the Hal Roach studio. When did they tear this down? Do 1963. You know? But they re what they did was some smart person rescued all the business correspondence in the offices right. before they tore down the buildings. Uh -huh. They ended up at USC, where there is a Hal Roach collection. Oh, there is? Yes. I spent ages going through documents after documents, starting in 1914, uh -huh. Uh -huh. all through the late 50s, to write my book. I read oh, business letters, uh -huh. Western Union telegrams. Mm -hmm. Postal telegraphs, you know, missives of all kinds. Ah, this is what I know of Hell Roach. The kids, the dead end kids. The our the, gang, our kids. gang kids. Oh, yes, the our gang our kids. Our gang, our gang kids. I love them. Look yeah. at them. Look also, uh, the, the little rascals, the they were rascals. also known on when they were shown on TV. These are the original kids, but there were many more. Yeah. How many more? The series sure? started in 1922. He had a series of six or seven, eight kids. And uh, usually, they were about three years old when he would hire he them, hired him. Uh -huh. and they would work for about three or four years, and then he'd have a they turnover. Get bigger, mm -hmm. bigger and bigger. Yeah, the older they got, then he'd replace them with younger kids, uh -huh. so that every seven years or so, I think, they had a turnover. How did he find these kids? Because it's not like an audition or anything. He He wanted natural kids. Natural. He wanted natural kids with no show business experience. Connection, yeah. Or anything. Because he was tired of seeing these stage mothers bringing in their artificial cutie pies. Yeah. 
and he wanted natural real kids. Uh, and he'd, he'd allow mothers and fathers to send in photos and talk about their kid. If you liked them, he'd have a screen test. Screen test? Oh, did he really? Yeah. Oh, okay. My favorite group, these two buddies here. Look at that. Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. They were good friends with uh, Hell Roach, weren't they? Oh, gosh. Tell me uh, about that. They had the most wonderful working relationship. relationship. Working. To, well, in the mid-20s, everything seemed to come together. Stan Laurel had been working on the stage. He'd made a few shorts as a solo comedian, uh -huh. but wasn't getting the success he wanted. When he teamed, Hal Roach and several other executives uh -huh. saw how how these two met. Well, that's him behind uh, Hal. Uh, Hal. Yeah, Hal, Hal Roach is watching him uh, sneak out of a business conference around 1931. That's 31. In, at his studio. Yeah. I was born. I was born in 1929. Okay. <laughs> I was that's the year. Uh, that's the year Hal Roach <laughs> released his first talkies. In, in 1929. First talkie? Yes. Really? He was one of the first Hollywood producers to convert to, to sound film. Sound film. 1928, he had all, everything converted. Uh-huh. He was the very first? One of them. Is this him acting? Yes. Is this that him is from, as an actor? He played a convict, yeah. just a bit part, you know, as uh -huh. a gag, in uh -huh. Laurel and Hardy's first feature film, Pardon Us, in 1931. So people are still looking. He wasn't like Hitchcock, who made Hitchcock, a point yeah. of being in every movie he made. Uh, Hal Roach would just sporadically do that. What says 1914 to 1934? That's his anniversary? Hal Roach's 20th anniversary as a movie producer. He threw a huge party on one of his big sound stages. Everybody in Hollywood showed up. Louis B. Mayer, Gene Harlow, uh -huh. a, young, a young Walt Disney, his great stars, Harold Lloyd... Theda Barra was there. Charlie and Chase. Charlie Chase. Oh my God, Charlie Chase. Oh. Yeah, another of his now, great Now, who comedians. are these two people with L. Roach, his two buddy friends? Yes, Laurel and Hardy. In 1932, they won an Academy Award. Tell me about these two. Did they like each other? Or? Oh, forever. For Yeah, their entire lives. I mean, yeah. Laurel and Hardy. Stan Laurel was from England. He was the... Uh, Obsessed one as far as getting the scripts and and the editing and oh, yeah. directing. Yeah, Ollie was much more easygoing. He just loved to act and make people laugh. Ollie is the Ollie one. Oliver Hardy. Yeah, the big one. The big one from yeah. Harlem, Georgia area. Yeah, and he was he really was a southern gentleman. Was he? Yeah, he loved to golf, have a good he time. He was a good-looking guy, you know. He was a very put him in a tuxedo here. Hal Roach, and yeah. And that, Hal Roach, and there is the lady of the screen. Jean Harlow. Jean Harlow, right and, over and her here. And her mother. And her mother. her mother. At the 20th anniversary party, he had he had starred or featured. She was a, a bit player in the late 20s in some early, uh, her she early did? silence. Oh, really? Yeah. And here she is again. No, this is not her. Who is this that? is... Thelma Todd. Thelma Todd. His Look other at her. beautiful blonde. This is Thelma Todd over the here. The blonde. And, and he teamed her with Patsy Kelly. That's my friend, Patsy Kelly. Look how thin she was. <laughs> yeah. I knew Patsy in a gay club here on La Cienega. I met her there several times. She loved that club. But she still had that face. Yeah. The face never changed. She got fat and I, at the end of her life. She was great in Rosemary's Baby. She was. She yeah, was fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, she, she was, had that brash personality. Yes, yeah, she did. You did you know her? I never met her. Never met her, huh? Alas. Now tell me about you. You met Hal Roach. Yeah, nineteen. You were a young kid. 1973. Okay. I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I was enrolled at the UCLA Motion Picture Television Department. Right. We were taking a class on American film comedy. Uh huh. We had to write a paper, and I thought, well, it's. 1973, maybe there's some old timers still around. Uh -huh. I literally looked in the phone book, found the name Hal Roach, called the number. You a did? Yes. <laughs> a little girl answered the phone. Hello? I said, is this the home of Hal Roach, who used to be a movie producer? Yes, it is. <laughs> May I speak with him? Just a minute. Grandpa, telephone. Uh, OK. 
cute. That's how it happened. <laughs> That's what happened, and yeah. you went to see him. I said, may I interview you for my school paper? He uh-huh. said, sure, meet me next week at the Bel Air Country Club. I know it. I'll be in the card room. Uh-huh. And that was Such it. and such, such and time. So I went there, yes. Uh-huh. It's all described in my book. That's great. I never, I had no idea what, what would evolve, that we'd become friends. Uh-huh. I'd know him for nearly 20 years. 20 years. And in 1988, when he was 96, he invited me to move into his home to help him write what he was calling his comeback comedy. Oh, really? Yes. So you went to his home, you I, stayed there? I stayed there, all described in my book. The it's whole all experience. in the book. The book is good, too. It's 100 years with Brody's with Hal Roach. I like that word, Brody's. Brody's. I didn't yeah. explain it. It means a pratfall. And oh. you know what it's based on, Brody? Brody, Steve Brody was a Brooklyn guy. Steve Brody, yes, yes. Lord's attorney's brother. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a disreputable oh, guy oh, from around. Oh, excuse me. From 1886. Oh, okay. It even predates you, sir, believe it or not. <laughs> and it, it predated Hal Roach. He was telling a story from days before him, even. Uh huh. And Steve Brody made a bet. He I, Apparently he was a drunken Irishman. I don't know. He made a bet with somebody. He could jump off the Brooklyn Bridge and survive. He said, I don't care if I survive or not. If I do, you're taking me for a free drink right. at the tavern. This was documented in the 1933 movie The Bowery with George Raft. Raft, uh-huh. I think George Raft played this guy, Steve Brody, or somebody. They actually... The, but it's forgotten in today's yes, world, yes, you know? Yes, yes. But that was a slang. If you sur- if you made a huge fall and survived, you did a Brody. You did a Brody, okay. Tell me about this. Oh, that was, that was a scandal in 1937. The dictator Mussolini loved Laurel and Hardy comedies and he wanted Hal Roach to produce Italian operas starring Laurel and Hardy. Right. He made him a deal Hal Roach could not refuse. Now, this is 1937. This is two years before World War II. This is two years, be- well, at least this one Mussolini's year. This Mussolini's son? His son, Vittorio. This is Victoria there in the middle? He that came is- to Hollywood. This was called the Cutting social the event of the year by some and uh, a political scandal by others. Uh-huh. I'll let you decide. Yes, look at the Mr. Uh, I can, you can never tell this one. D.W. Griffith. This is D.W. Griffith, the man who really, the beginning of the movies. Yes, he was, and Hal Roach respected. Come with me at the camera again. There he is. Keep it there. There he is. Yes. D.W. Griffith had not made a movie in years, and he was Uh living in retirement in Kentucky. Oh, really? And Hal Roach offered him a six-month contract to come and help him with some of his productions. Right. And, and D.W. was very eager and happy to do so. And it uh, resulted in, D.W. discovered Carol Landis. Carol Landis, who, who was in love with Rex Harrison. Mm. She went to London and England and came back and, and very much in love with Rex Harrison. And uh, she committed suicide. Yeah. That's what I heard. You know, there was a lot of tragedy in my research. A lot of beautiful women that were in Hal Roach's employ at one time or another uh-huh. ended tragically and young uh i was shocked he Who's had this lovely lady person? that's his daughter his beautiful daughter is margaret that, is that his daughter that's his daughter uh, and she was okay. in a, uh-huh, a number go of films ahead. in the early 40s go ahead tell me what i interrupted you i'm sorry you were telling me about there's a lot of tragedy yes yes uh beginning with clarine seymour a beautiful brunette, totally forgotten today. I have her picture in my book. Uh-huh. Hal Roach starred her with a clown named Toto. Toto, of course. Totally forgotten, I think, by, by most. Uh-huh. Not you, of course. Uh-huh. Um, he was an actual clown, and Hal Roach had a great idea for a series of one-reelers. Uh-huh. He became so popular, they made two-reelers. I think most of his films are missing by now. One or two might have survived. But his co-star was Clarine Seymour, and the poor thing, D.W. Griffith starred her in two movies mm-hmm. after uh, she was with Roach. Right. And then she died at the age of 21. 21, young, 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 and beautiful. Thelma Todd was young, you know. Yeah. Um, Carol Landis was young. Carol Landis. It's she was from Long Beach. 
Mm -hmm. Carol Alice. There she was in go. about three films. To start. You did this. You're an artist, also. Look at that. Yeah, I was a I was a little <laughs> artist as a kid, and as a teenager, I drew this. You just up. said as a teen, and when you were a teenager. Yes. That, that's Laurel and Hardy. That's Laurel and Hardy. Several no, years, I had no idea I'd be meeting Hal Roach, their boss. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's great. What happened to this painting? Well, I have it. I I digitized it. There it is for the world that's to it, see. That's it. The world to see it. This is you and Hal Roach together, right? That's right. During one Look of my it. visits in 1982. Look how young you were. God. I was. You were all young. Look at Hal Roach and you. You were a nice Jewish boy who went to UCLA. UCLA. Uh huh. But he also knew I was very accomplished as an actor in the theater, doing a lot of you comedy did Shakespeare's? roles. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Uh, you studied uh, there at the USC acting and all that, or what? UCLA. UCLA. Okay. Now let's let's not. I don't want to cause a rivalry here. No. UCLA no. is the school I went to. USC is, is the else. home of the Hal Roach collection. Collection. I which see. It's wonderful that it's. This there. is you as an actor. As an actor, but I was in a a General Motors short playing James Finlayson, one of Laurel and Hardy's villains. Uh -huh. And these guys were great. They were uh, they Universal good. Studio impersonators. Really. They had I a great career. Yeah, that's very good. I love it. Look at all these stars behind you. The pictures. Hal Roach oh. had a wonderful um, sort of a repertoire, repertory group. Look at that. Nice, nice, nice. You collected a lot of pictures, did you? I have, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, as a kid, I started on Black Hawk Films. Would make eight millimeter and Super Eight clips of Laurel and Hardy Tell films. Tell about the moment of this picture. He seems kind of. Disappointed and ha unhappy there. Or? Well, he's a hundred years old. A hundred years old there. That's when I visited him. I showed him a, a few films. He was getting a little t tired, but he was very fine. Hundred years old. Was he walking? Yes, he could walk. No walker. He, no. He had a couple of canes. Sometimes he used. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he could shuffle along. Shuffling along. That's it. That's mm -hmm. the word. And he was partying up to the very end. He was. Oh, he was. Uh -huh. He went to Germany, I think. He went to the. Las Vegas Sons of the Desert Convention. This is the t this is your book cover. That's the cover. Beautiful a facsimile of it. Here it is. That's the actual cover. This is the actual cup book. That's it's wonderful, a, Craig. I think the book is going to do very very well. It's a good book. It has a great journey of Hollywood, the old Hollywood. Yes, it's amazing. 2014 is the hundredth anniversary of Hal Roach becoming a movie producer. Uh huh. And how many films did he do? Oh, I believe it's over 2,000. Over 2,000. Shorts and features. Shorts. And the looks. Do you have a favorite of his? Oh. Or, oh, it's that. You know, his great prestige movie was Of, of Mice and Men. 1939 right. has to be one of the greats. It's a great movie. It is, isn't it? Yes. Uh, there's one he I've never that. seen. He's Hal Roach did that with Lewis Milestone as the director. Uh-huh. And everyone knew what a great cast. Burgess Meredith, Lon Chaney Jr. Burgess Meredith, one of my favorite actors. I think he's just incredible. Yeah. And then he got into Rocky in the <laughs> 70s and became the Rocky's manager. Could you imagine? I couldn't believe that. Burgess Meredith! I loved him. I think he's a great theater. Do you know? Theater. Oh, of course. That's my tradition. That's my yardstick. You grew yardstick. up in the theater. Uh, well, you're yes. from New York, anyway. No, the I Jewish mean, area, you know, I grew you? up in San Diego. Oh, really? As a kid, we'd go to the Shakespeare Festival at the oh, Old okay, Globe Theater, okay. and I said to myself, when Anthony Zerby, playing Iago or whatever, right. spit with such passion and it landed on my forehead, I said, I'm going to be an actor, and I'm going to be on that stage one day. Uh -huh. And I was. Uh -huh. I did. Who's your favorite actor? Do you have one? Who was or is? I have a whole slew of them. Basil Rathbone, Claude Rains. Claude Rains is my one of my right. Friends. Betty Davis. Davis. Betty Davis. Did you ever meet her? No. Yes, I did. Congratulations. The movie. Uh, this this is Hell Roach. Um, the Brodies. I think the Brodies and Hell Roach are together. Oh. I love this book. I think it's great. Thank you. I'm gonna read it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, you're wonderful, and you're a good storyteller too. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you. You're wonderful. 
Oh, thanks. You're for a having wonderful me. guy. You did also. You appeared on Mad Men. Yes, I, I. You I, didn't say a word, but you were there with Mad Men, with my friend Bobby Morris, Robert Morris, the wonderful Robert Morris. Didn't I you love, love that Bobby. dance he did at the end? Oh, uh, he's absolutely wonderful. He's a dear man. I love him. Oh. Okay, great. Thank you Thank so you. much. I love it. Thank you.